Preparing for Jesus by Walter Wangeren, Jr. The Fifth Day of Christmas The Story The Prophets Prove Him the Messiah A reading from St. Luke Now there was in Jerusalem a man by the name of Simeon who was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him, and it had been revealed to him by this Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Inspired by the Spirit, then, Simeon came into the temple court. When the parents brought in Jesus to do for him what was customary according to the law, Simeon embraced the child in his arms. And there was a prophetess, Anna, daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, who was of great age. For she had married as a young girl and lived with her husband seven years, and then by herself as a widow for 84 years. She never left the temple courts. Day and night she worshipped God, fasting and praying. Now at this very moment, she too came up and gave thanks to God, and she spoke about the child to all those waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. So here comes an old man through the Nicanor gate. His fierce, moist eyes is fixed on... On Mary? No but on the child in her arms, on Jesus, who now is wide awake, whose baby eyes catch hungrily at every temple thing. Old man, his head bound tight by a turban nearly as old as he, there is a glowing in him like the dawning light. There is a pressure in him like song about to burst. The baby sees him, stares at him in return, and is not afraid. But Mary's afraid. Joseph isn't acting like a shield now, and her ears are painfully alert. Simeon, his several priests nearby, Simeon, righteous and devout, they whisper. To her, it sounds like criticism. Perhaps they hate the one who makes them feel inferior under the law. But people said the same about her husband. What sort of soul is troubled by righteousness? Perhaps she shouldn't fear, fear the old man's fierceness after all. Ah, uh, but he comes toward her like a storm wind sweeping the dry estrolon. Simeon, the priests hiss, Simeon says he won't die till he's seen the comfort of Israel. But comfort, comfort was promised long ago and never yet has come. Let Messiah appear on a horse with a sword. Let him cut Rome at her throat and set us free. Then the old man can die, for then he will have seen the Lord's anointed. Mary would close her ears if she could, but she's holding the baby, watching that old man bear down upon them. There's something invidious in this whispered language. Oh, shut my ears. What was so recently so right is suddenly twisted, distorted. Messiah on a horse? Messiah, an assassin? The fist of a mighty force? But the old man who's seeking the Christ, his roomy eye is fixed on Jesus. And Mary remembers the promise in Isaiah, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended that her iniquity is pardoned, 
that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. You, you, fierce Simeon cries as he arrives, you are the one. He reaches for the child. In spite of her fears and confusion, his mother releases Jesus to Simeon. The baby gazes into the red, watery eyes above him, unafraid. He'll never ride a war horse, Mary announces spontaneously. My child will never swing the death sword. And the old man, his eyes trembling with the holy light, does not disagree. Blessed be God, he cries, for a Christ of the kinder consolations. At that same moment, Mary feels a hand on her shoulder. She turns and finds an ancient woman, short, more wrinkled than the hills of Judea. It's him, the woman says. This child is the redemption of Jerusalem. Young Mary crowded now by aging and age and the ages. She herself has fulfilled the law, and here are two prophets proving that her baby truly is the Christ. Simeon nods sharply at the ancient woman. Anna, he says. Simeon, says she. Suddenly his old face splits in a grin. He elevates the infant between them and asks, how many years? Jesus looks down on the ancient woman. As a widow, 84 years, says she. I am 103, never not fasting, never not praying for this. Oh, thank the Lord, Anna whispers, reaching and brushing the face of the baby with one swollen knuckle. Thank God for little Messiah here. No horse, she says in the ear of his mother. No sword for his enemies. No warrior this. No killer he. Your baby is better than that. It was then that the old man sang two songs in the courts of the temple. One caused Mary unspeakable joy. The second one nearly killed her. Let us pray. Jesus, whenever I wish your kingdom to progress by power, forgive me. Whenever I myself take up swords, political, commercial, physical, even and especially when I do so in your name, forgive me. Forgive my wish for a warrior Lord. Forgive my angers, my condemnations of others, of any others, whether I feel that I am the righteous one or that they are too righteous for me. Oh, Jesus, teach me what sort of Messiah you are. Save me from seeking a human heroism in you and from venerating any hero hateful to you. Grant me meekness. Grant me sacrifice. Grant me humility. Grant me to love as you do. Grant me your own sweet spirit. Grant me you. Amen.